It is time for us to cleanse you. Right, so our first battle with an Urquan, uh, and it is not the green Urquan that we're normally f uh, familiar with, but I'm going to take Snellope into battle against the black Urquan Kora. Let's see how we do. Ooh, ooh, it's got some powerful weapons. It's got some pretty powerful weapons. Um, okay, so what was that there? That was some sort of like. some. You can fire these kind of. Whoa, that massive like explosion of fire. That looks pretty dangerous, and so do those spinning things. Um, the Zolfot Pick told us about those, the spinning projectiles they said or something. So I guess they were telling the truth. Of course they, they were because they're living so close to the um, Urquan space. Um, so, he's firing all these um, projectile things. They st seem to stick in the uh, in the battlefield, so I guess we can. they're kind of like hazards, so we don't want to run into any of them. We have hit him once, and we've hit him a few more times, so that's good. But he's got a huge amount of health. Um, I'd say 40 or so, because we've got 30. And he's also got a huge amount of battery, way more than we do. And um, he doesn't really take too much um, battery away from when he's using those um, spinning things, but it does take away a huge amount of his battery when he's using the big fiery explosion. Uh, oh dear, just ran into that there. That's not good. Come on, just hit him loads more times. Oh, I don't want to bang into that planet either. Yeah, crashing into the planet would be bad, but I hit him a few more times there. Got a good six, six or seven damage. Well, six damage. Two per hit with the uh, Spath. Oh, damn, didn't want to do that. That was unlucky. Okay, it's more even now. Oh, God, I don't want to die. I've only got two Spathy ships left. It does seem like the right choice, though, for these Spathy ships, because they can kind of dodge all of the attacks that the Korra are putting at us. They don't seem to be too quick. I think the Urquan... Oh, I'll hit again. I think the Urquan are probably going to be relying on their heavy firepower more than their maneuverability. Um, so this is the Black Urquan. I wonder what the uh, Green are going to be like. He said that the Black were defeated. So, um, obviously the green Urquan are even more powerful, unless, you know, they were just bad pilots, I don't know. So, don't want to run into that. See, look, it just keeps, he can hold it down. He can just keep it running for as long as he wants. It's annoying. It's a little bit quicker than me. So he's probably winning right now. He's got more health than me, but I am starting to take him down a little bit. It's going to be a close one. Just need to get into good range, but I hope I dodge the um, fire attack. See, he's using that fire attack to dodge my, uh, or to um, destroy my uh, missiles, which is annoying. Oh, got close in there. Oh, almost got hit. I don't know how much damage that fire thing is, so I don't really want to find out. Um, I'll find out on Super Media later. But, oh my god, he's hit me again. This could be bad. That was close. He's hit me again. Oh, this is not good. I need to be careful now. One more hit and I'm down, I think. Does like four damage per hit, I think that, that thing does, and I would say that those fiery bolts do even more, but jeez, I need to just hit him like maybe three more times now. Four more times. Come on. Just need to get close in. He's putting loads of mines around, so I can't get close in. That was close! Go on, just need to get close in. There we go. This is a good chance. Low on battery. When he's low on battery, I can get him close and hit, get a few shots on him. There we go. Okay, two more shots. And one for him. See if we can get it down to sudden death. One shot each. Okay, it's down to sudden death. One shot each. Oh, that was so close. Always hit him with the two there. And he almost hit the planet. He's making kind of a wall of those mine defense things. And uh, got to be really careful because he's storing up a lot of battery. Could fire a huge amount of those things at once. Oh, that was close! Whoa! Okay, come on, hit it once. Yes, there we go. Snellope is the victor against Death Seventeen, and there we are. Awesome. Well done. I'm I'm gonna just escape now. I don't think I can beat all four of them. There was four Korra ships, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to destroy all four of them. But at least we took down one. That was what I wanted to do. And I'm gonna go with the flagship now. Escape. Get far away and try to escape without getting hit too much. Hopefully, he doesn't use his. Massive attack. Oh, we got hit me once. Whoa, that was close. Okay, let's escape as quick as we can before these guys reassemble. Nice to see you, though, Korra. Thanks for all the information. Um, and we'll be seeing you later, hopefully, maybe. Well, maybe not, actually. Probably a bad idea to run into those guys again, because I don't think they're going to be so friendly to us. Whoa, they've got a huge... Oh, it, it's... Oh, of course, of course, with the war, they're going to be um, fighting. But that's another huge area. Um for the Korra there. So both of the Urquan um, races have got huge areas. But I'm going to just escape into quasi space before anything bad happens. Um, like me getting caught with even more um, 
Korra, and maybe even possibly Urquan. Um, so I'm just going to head back to Earth now, um, back into the safe zone, um, which is good. It's a rather safe area down here where Earth is, just kind of the eel wrath, as long as we stay away from it, it's fine. Um, which is cool. And we've also got a huge amount of um, biodata to offload to the Mel Norma as well, which we're going to have to do so we can get some awesome information from them. Hopefully some news this time instead of technology. Let's head back to Earth. It's already been a year since um, the beginning of this game, so we've got to keep that in mind. I don't know if the time actually matters. I hope the battle fares well, Captain. I have some information I think you should hear. It would appear your diplomatic efforts have struck gold, Captain. We've been contacted by a race called the Zakpat Pik, who wish to fulfill their part of the unification, something you have arranged with them, I gather. They have sent us specifications for the Stinger-class attack vessels, as well as a large number of Zakpat Pik commanding officers. You're doing a fine job, Captain. Well, thank you very much, Commander. And I'm um, we'll say goodbye to you now, me, and um, just fill up on fuel and stuff. Just to kind of, you know, regroup after that attack from the core. I didn't really lose too much, just lost a few men from the Spathy. Um, and also a few men from that one shot that it hit on us in the um, crew pods of the Nova Mace. But, I'm going to fill up on fuel. I think we're going good for uh, weapons and other stuff on our ship. Um, the reason I took away most of the storage base is because... Um, I feel that as long as I just go to exotic planets, like the emerald ones and sapphire and stuff, I can just like get two full storage bays of exotics. I can bring back like you know 20,000 IUs each time I go mining, which is pretty nice. Um, but I'm going to head out now into the wide world to find the Mel Norme. I think I'm going to test out that um, hyperwave caster, see if it has any use. But I'm going to head over to Alpha Centauri first uh, to see if the Mel Norme are there. Um, if they're not, then we can test out the Ungar caster thing to see if we can call the Mel Norma in, I guess. I think that's what it's probably used for. So, let's use the um, Hyperwave caster first just to see if the Mel Norma are around. If not, they're probably at Alpha Centauri, maybe? No? They're not here? Hello? Maybe they're just far away? No? Let's try again. Does it matter if we use it like multiple times? Does it make a difference? I guess not. I don't think they're here. Well, I guess we'll just head to Alpha Centauri then. And uh, see if we can find them there. I definitely want to go and talk to them because, as I said, I've got like something like 750 biodata, which means I'm going to get like 1,500 technology. We can get even more, uh, sorry, 1,500 credits. We can get even more technology from them. And if we've got some spare, then we can get some information from them. Because we're starting to run out of quests, really. We've started to complete most of the quests that we've been given. And uh, we've also got a quest that we can't really complete. Because um, that Dinyari is kind of just in the way, kind of impossible to get through. So, yeah. Let's use the Umgar Caster. Because they weren't in Alpha Centauri. So they're not here, I guess. What if we head back into the planet and then... Oh, there's a few ships coming now. Let's go meet one. There's two ships approaching. Uh, one of them is approaching a lot quicker than the other. I'm just going to save the game. I think the slow one is going to be the Mel Norme, though. Oh god, who's this? This one was very quick. Oh, not again. This probe is not hostile. Do not attack. Oh, what a, what's the use? But regardless of what I say, you'll just attack. Priority set at point of origin. Behavior follows dictated priorities. Priority override. New behavior dictated. Must break target into component materials. Right, so another probe to completely decimate. Um, let's head in with the flagship and show it what we got. Okay. Well. It's a bit useless. Okay, there we go. Bang, bang, bang. Destroy it. There we go. Down. Down in three hits. The good thing is they haven't got met much crew, so it's an easy 550 RU when you've got the good firepower. But uh, here's another ship that's a little bit slower, so I'm guessing this is the Mel Norme. 
Yes. Your arrival was predicted by our soul crystal's vibrations. We already know why you are here and what you need from us. However, etiquette requires that we act as though we are ignorant of your desires. Now, what can we do for you today? We have a ton of biodates to sell to what Captain like Arenas. Captain? Dates on alien life forms. Seven hundred fifteen eight units of biological data we downloaded from your ship earn you one thousand five hundred sixteen credits. Wow, that is quite a lot of credits. Okay, let's go. Oh god, I just accidentally. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I just accidentally said goodbye to him. Okay, I guess we're gonna have to use the hyperwave caster again. Oh, I'll just load the game actually. Um, can we dodge this guy? Maybe. Can we oh no! Oh, never mind. We'll just have to destroy another probe. Never mind. It's fine. It wasn't too difficult. I'll just skip all this conversation stuff. And I'll just use the same stuff because I don't know if it affects what they tell us if I say different things each, each time. But here we go again, and that was even quicker this time. Awesome. And they only lost one crew. Nice. So 550 are you, and let's go to that man Lorme and talk to him. I'll skip all this text as well. Okay. Items I'd like to sell, data on alien life forms, lots of credits, la da. Okay, whoa, don't wanna do that. Okay. I'd like to make some purchases. I would like to buy some fuel to start with. How much fuel do you wish to purchase? I would like to fill my fuel tanks to max capacity. To your vessel. Very nice, thank you very much, Greenish. Um, now, first of all, I think we're going to buy some technology. We are now offering includes plans for including the rate of fire on your lander's sun ray bolt field gun. Yes, definitely want that. After some wild game, hmm? Well, the changes we made should really make a difference. Unless, of course, that wiring went in backwards, in which case you won't be able to shoot at all. Or take off, for that matter. Don't worry, Captain. We stand behind our work. If something goes wrong, just bring it back to us, and we'll fix it. Plus, though. The technology we are now offering includes details for building modifications to your planet landers, which make them resistant to earthquakes. Well, hopefully they haven't got the wiring wrong, but I definitely want resistance to earthquakes. With the addition of these safety belts and heavy-duty shock absorbers, your lander occupants should be much safer when an untimely earthquake strikes. The job is complete. Your landers are ready. The technology we are now offering includes plans for adding auto-tracking modules, which improve the aim of all your weapons. Now this is something we definitely need to improve our uh, aim with your flagship, so this is definitely something for a mighty battle, eh? Well, let me give you some advice. You should consider using multiple tracking modules, since this will greatly improve your aim. However, never add more than three to your ship. Any more would be useless. The technology we are now offering includes plans for adding improvements to your planet landers, which make them resistant to inclement planet weather. Again, something we definitely need for the landers. A little superconductive spray paint and presto. Your lander can sustain a direct hit by a lightning bolt without crisping the passengers inside. Usually. Since the job is so easy that a nymph could do it, I expect all your landers will be treated in less than an hour. The technology we are now offering is everything you need to know to assemble modifications to your planet landers, which make them resistant to planetary hotspots. 
And with that, we are pretty much resistant to everything, I think, now. Ablative plasma heat shields. Your crew will be substantially safer on hot worlds. But like all our lander modifications, this protection is not perfect. So remain cautious. Since the changes to your landers are straightforward, your lander should be fitted with the heat shields by the time you return to your ship. The technology we are now offering is plans for building Hellbore Cannons, a weapon much more destructive than a simple blaster. Yes, please, Greenish. Captain, just a suggestion. Hellbore Cannons are energy gulpers. So unless you want to have a long delay between shots, I would suggest you add dynamos or even Shiva furnaces to your ship. The technology we are now offering includes details on how to develop Shiva furnace modules, which generate energy for your combat batteries twice as fast as your standard dynamo. Now, I want to buy this, so I'm going to do that, but I, he um, explained something a bit badly, so I'll explain afterwards. New module, Captain. With it, you should be able to destroy and devastate twice as fast as before. Commander, that is the limit of the new technology we can offer you. If I may say so, you have been an excellent customer. Thank you. You're welcome, Greenish. Um, but now I want some information from you, because we've got all this technology, it seems. So we time to get some information. We've still got 400... 63 credits. In many centuries of star trading, we now know they have come to learn much about what happens in our galaxy, both now and in the ancient past. We have also kept records on the diverse alien races in your region space. We will share this crucial knowledge with you for a fee of 75 credits per informative fact. No refunds. Right, so there's three categories here. I'm going to start with the top and head my way down. I'm going to buy one of each. So first, information about current events. While you probably believe that the show fixed are extinct, having caused their sun to flare with a device identical to the Utwig super bomb, the truth is not so simple. There yet, exists a chance to resuscitate this meta-marsupial species, though it will not be easy. The problem at hand seems simple. Bring together two Shofixti of different sexes, and the carnal gymnastics proceed. Given the short gestation and maturation time of the Shofixti, you will have thousands of the creatures in 10 years and millions in 20. Finding a male of the species is easier than fluff. Simply visit the Shofixti's blasted star system at Delta Gorno. Captain Tanaka, or its sibling, Katana, shall greet you on your arrival. A warning. These warriors are old and fly in barely functional ships. If they mistakenly identify you as the enemy, do not return fire. Retreat and try to talk to them on their own level. The phoenix of the species will be more difficult to obtain. The only supply of such remaining in the galaxy is at Alpha Cherenkov 1, included as part of General Zex's bizarre and beloved menagerie. Fortunately for you, Captain, Zex is considered, well, perverse by his fellow box. This is because Zex actually enjoys the presence of human beings. To acquire the show 60 females, you will have to appease Zex. 
or slow him. So there's a new uh, quest for us there. So we're gonna have to resuscitate the Shafixti. That'd be awesome. The Zakbatik are a friendly co-op of three alien species, all native to the same world. They are presently suffering severe collateral damage from the ritual combat between the Urquan and the Kola. While well, this is unfortunate for the Zakfak Pit, they have been forced to abandon many of their worlds. This close proximity to the inter-Urquan war will give them insights into the conflict, which will be of great use to you. In addition, the Zakfak Pit met the Chen Jesu early on in the war and are eager to make allies who can protect them from their enemies. In case you are interested, the Zakfak Pick homeworld is at coordinates 400.0 by 543.7 Planet 1. Well, that wasn't quite as useful as the first, but um, never mind. Uh, now for some historical Almost information. 25,000 of your years ago, there existed near this region of space an association of star-faring races called the Sentient Milieu. This group formed over several thousand years to mutually enrich their respective cultures to provide a safe crash for emerging sentient species and to afford themselves a degree of protection from external hostilities via military alliance. Of the seven most active milieu members, the most famous race, indeed, you know them well, Captain, were the Urquan. So that's the same um, group of uh, species as the Kora were talking to us about. I think for now that's enough talking to the Melnorme, so we'll leave him now. It has been a pleasure dealing with you, Captain. We look forward to your next visit. And there we are. That was a lot of um, talking to the Melnorme, but they gave us a huge amount of stuff, loads of technology, a um, good amount of information. And uh, next episode, I think we're going to head over to Delta Gorno to go and uh, find um, Tanaka or Katana and try and resuscitate the Shofixti race. So I'll see you guys then.